So you're the new starter. Man, people are gonna expect big things from you. You know, you're probably gonna be the most popular because you know, the fire type is always the best. So yeah, I hope you the best of luck. Oh yeah, just one more thing I wanted to tell you. If I find out you evolve into another fucking fire fighting Pokemon, I will literally come and find you and put you in the PC box number 30 next to Magikarp. <gasps> so, so yeah, I'll, I'll see you later, man. And, and don't forget, uh, you won't forget. What is going on guys, this is Dobbs here, bringing you another Pokemon video. And in this video, I'm going to show you the top 10 strongest starter Pokemon of all time. But there's a twist. This video will not only include the mainstream game starter Pokemon, but rather it will include all the starter Pokemon that we've seen throughout the anime, manga, and even other Pokemon games. And just a disclaimer, this is completely my opinion. Also Pokemon such as Blaziken and Greninja won't be included in this list because the hidden abilities that make them so competitively powerful aren't obtainable as a starter Pokemon, only through an event. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and without further ado, let's get started. Starting off this list, we have Brox's Onyx. Now like we all know, Brox's Onyx and later to be Steelix has always been one of his most powerful Pokemon. But you're probably asking yourself, why does his Onyx deserve a spot on this list? Well, let's start from the beginning. Like all Pokemon trainers, Brock received his Onyx from his father, Flint, when he turned 10 years old. It is said in the anime that Brock was a medic for the Pewter City Pokemon Center for a few years. So that would mean that he took over the gym when he was just around 13 years old. Now let's put that in perspective. There are only 8 Pokemon gyms in the entire Kanto region, and only those who are powerful enough to determine if a trainer is worthy to face an Elite Four or not can lead them. So that would mean that Brock's Onyx was powerful enough to help him become a Pokemon gym leader. Now I know what you're thinking. Brock's Onyx was defeated by Ash's Pikachu in the anime and was a low level in the Pokemon games. Well, first of all, Ash only won that battle because he accidentally triggered the sprinklers in the Pokemon Gym, which caused Onyx to become very weak. And for the games, it is proven in the anime short Pokemon Origins that Gym Leaders scaled their Pokemon to be an even match against their challenger. So for all we know, that Onyx we fought in the first generation games wasn't actually his starter. But for the fact that Onyx was strong enough to give Brock enough authority to be a Gym Leader at only 13 years old, I chose Brock's Onyx for number 10. Coming at number 9, we have Skitty from Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue. Now if you ever watched a speedrun of this game, you would quickly notice that the speedrunner usually uses Skitty and Squirtle, and there's a good reason for that. According to Pokemon speedrunner Worcester, Skitty is definitely the best option when trying to figure out which starter to choose from. The reason that Skitty is so useful when playing the game is because it has the moves Tail Whip and Leer. These two moves are very important when battling bosses in the game. Also, Skitty's a normal type, so Double Slap gets Stab, which if you didn't know, means same type attack boost. So for example, if a water type Pokemon uses a water move, the damage gets boosted an extra 50%. Also, Skitty has access to Attract, which can completely immobilize a Pokemon when battling against them, or when trying to escape a tough situation. So with this great move pool, Squirtle goes hand in hand with Skitty, because he can collab very well with a set of moves he learns very early on, which can be very deadly. So for those reasons, I chose Skitty for number 9. For number 8, I chose Squirtle for Pokemon Red and Blue. That's right, Squirtle is actually the better starter from the original Pokemon games. Now I know what you're thinking, how in the heck is Squirtle better than Charmander? Because obviously Charmander is the better starter Pokemon from the original games. Well, although Charmander is the most popular Pokemon from the trio, he isn't the most convenient when playing the Pokemon Red and Blue games. And here's why. A program called Wolfframe Alpha, which is an extremely smart calculator, recently obtained all the data for all the current Pokemon. A scientist named Kyle Hill decided to test a database and place the three starters against all the gym leaders Pokemon. After a lot of math and equations, it was determined that Squirtle is scientifically the best choice when playing through the game, because Squirtle always came on top when it came to type and move advantage when facing the trainer's Pokemon. Pretty crazy, right? So for the fact that Squirtle has been scientifically proven that he is the best starter Pokemon for the original games, I chose Squirtle for number 8. Coming at number 7, we have Totodile for Pokemon Gold and Silver. Now out of all the starter Pokemon from the mainstream games, Totodile is among the few that can completely sweep every single Pokemon they come across. As. He's so strong in fact, his early game is without a doubt the best out of all the starter Pokemon. He can easily go against higher level Pokemon without even breaking a sweat. Now you're probably asking yourself, what makes Totodile so powerful? Well, the move Rage is definitely a key factor on what makes Totodile insanely good. What this move does exactly, is that it builds attack bonuses every time a Pokemon uses it consecutively. So basically the more enraged the Pokemon is, the more damage the Pokemon will deal. 
With this move, it makes it easy going against strong gym leaders in the early game. Yes, even Whitney with that overpowered mill tank. Another key factor that makes Totodile very useful is his move pull. Totodile gets a powerful stab surf, earthquake, and strength to abuse his high attack. Along with that, his ice punch is very useful when going against your rival's Bayleaf and Lance's Dragonite. Just overall, he's a very powerful Pokemon. The reason why Cyndaquil and Chikorita aren't really viable is because Cyndaquil has very low defense and has an inferior move pool. Chikorita, on the other hand, doesn't really have a lot of type coverage, and her weakness really cripples her against the first couple gems. So for the fact that Totodile is extremely useful for the entire game, I chose Totodile for number 7 on this list. Coming at number 6, we have Mudkip for Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. Now Mudkip and later to be Swampert is a very handy Pokemon to have. Only being weak to grass type moves, Swampert's high attack and move pull makes him a very powerful Pokemon. No gym leader from the Hoenn region will have the type advantage when going against Swampert. I mean heck, even one of them can't even lay a finger on Swampert because it's immune to electric type moves. On top of that, Swampert's stab earthquake is a force shot to be reckoned with. Even though Swampert has kind of a low speed stat, its defenses really make up for it. Even grass type Pokemon are vulnerable to the starter, because Swampert can learn ice type moves, which is pretty OP. And in my opinion, behind the event Blaziken and Greninja, I think Swampert is the strongest starter Pokemon from all the mainstream Pokemon games. But he isn't the strongest starter. But anyways, for those reasons, I chose Mudkip for number 6. For number 5, I chose Ash's Pikachu from the Pokemon anime. Now what's a top 10 starter list without Ash's notorious overpowered Pikachu? I mean this non-fully evolved Pokemon has taken out some of the strongest Pokemon we've ever seen in the anime. From the start, we knew how special this Pikachu was, because somehow this tiny mouse managed to take down a freaking Onix with Thunderbolt. Which is kind of ridiculous because Onix is supposed to be immune to electric type moves, but whatever anime logic. But anyways, not only that, in the early stages of the anime when Pikachu was still relatively a low level of Pokemon, he was able to defeat a Dragonite in the Orange Archipelago League. A Dragonite, a pseudo Pokemon that is used by champions. Not to mention that the lowest level a Dragonite could be is 55, which is pretty crazy. I mean there's a reason why Team Rocket wants to steal this particular Pikachu. It has something special that no other Pikachu has, and that is it is overpowered. But on the downside, every time Ash and his friends travel to a new region, there's always a lame excuse on how Pikachu loses his power and is resetted. Could you imagine how powerful this Pikachu would be if that didn't happen? It would be one monstrous of a Pikachu. But for the fact that this Pikachu has defeated very powerful opponents, I chose Ash's Pikachu for number 5 on this list. For number 4, we have Flint's Chimchar. Now this is Flint's only known Pokemon, but I wouldn't be surprised if he even needs another Pokemon, because this Infernape is extremely powerful. This powerhouse of a Pokemon was able to take down Ash's two strongest Pokemon with ease, Ash's Pokemon being his Infernape and Pikachu. The history behind why this Infernape is so powerful lies when Flint was just a kid. Back when Flint and Chimchar were young, they lived in a city that was full of criminals. In order to even survive in this rough environment, they had to become strong so they could defend themselves when in trouble. Going a little further ahead, against all odds, Flint was able to win the Sinnoh League with just his Monferno. His Monferno didn't even evolve until later when he became a Elite Four member. But being able to do all of this with just his Infernape is literally insane. Type disadvantage doesn't even matter to this Pokemon. It will flare blitz any Pokemon that stands in its way. Not to mention that this Infernape was able to take down two of Cynthia's Pokemon before losing to her Garchomp, which is very impressive. So for those reasons, I chose Flint's Chimchar for number 4. Coming at number 3, we have Alan's Charmander. Now you probably thought Ash's Charizard was powerful, but just wait until you hear what kind of beast Alan's Charizard is. Going back to how Alan even obtained his Charmander, it all started when he was Professor Sycamore's assistant. To understand more about what the Megastones were, Alan was given a Charmander to aid him on his journey to research. Throughout the years, this Charizard has fought against some of the strongest Pokemon, ranging from champions to legendary Pokemon. The first battle we even witnessed this monstrous Charizard was when Alan was challenged by Astrid and her Mega Absol. Of course, Alan's Charizard defeated the Absol with ease, but that's just the beginning. This Charizard has gone against Cybolt's Mega Blastoise, who is in fact an Elite Four member. He wasn't able to defeat the Blastoise, but he held in long enough for it to be a very impressive feat. Alan's Charizard has also faced against Steven's Mega Metagross, which I would only assume to be the most powerful owned Pokemon in the entire Hoenn region. Honestly, this Charizard probably has the best track record of any Pokemon I've ever seen. I mean, all the Pokemon you see on the screen right now has fought against this Charizard, which is pretty insane. Without a doubt, Alan's Charizard is among the strongest Pokemon we've seen throughout the anime. So for those reasons, I chose Alan's Charmander for number 3 on this list. For number 2, I chose Red's Poliwag from the Pokemon Adventures manga. 
Now, it's a common misconception that Red's first Pokemon from the manga was a Bulbasaur. Although Bulbasaur was technically a starter Pokemon he received from Professor Oak, Bulbasaur wasn't actually his first Pokemon. The history behind Polly, which is what Red named him, started with a near-death experience. The hero we all know and love would have died if it weren't for this Poliwag. How the story goes, Red began to drown while swimming in a pond. Polly as a small Poliwag couldn't do anything but watch this poor kid suffer. Due to being unable to save Red in his current state, Polly evolved into a Poliwhirl in order to save him, which is a pretty awesome backstory for Red's first Pokemon. Now Polly is surprisingly one of Red's weakest permanent party members in his lineup. He is 9 levels under Red's strongest Pokemon, which is in fact his Snorlax. From the start, this Poliwhirl was a very strong Pokemon. During Red's first gym, Polly one-shotted everything that he went up against despite being at low health. But that's kind of obvious, because Brock's gym is full of Rock-type Pokemon, so Polly of course had the upper hand. But, in the Danger High Voltorb chapter, Polly goes up against Lieutenant Surge, Electabuzz, and Magneton. In a close fight, Polly evolves into a Poliwrath and finishes off Lieutenant Surge, Electabuzz with a seismic toss with ease. Not only that, Polly helped Red win the Pokemon League with his genius idea to enhance the water vapor in the air so that Red's Pikachu could defeat the opponent with a thundercloud, which was pretty smart. This Poliwrath is definitely a one of a kind, so for those reasons I chose Red's Poliwag for number 2 on my list. And for the strongest starter Pokemon, in my opinion, is... Red's Charmander from Pokemon Origins. Now this was a very tough decision between the top 3 because they are all very strong Pokemon. But what made me choose Red's Charizard for Pokemon Origins as the strongest starter of all time was the fact that it is not only the first Pokemon to ever Mega Evolve, but it helped Red defeat and catch Mewtwo. And that is a huge accomplishment. On top of that, this Charizard helped Red turn Giovanni from a corrupted leader into someone pure. And not many Pokemon can do that. Also, this Charizard helped Red win the Pokemon League against Blue's Blastoise, which is without a doubt the third strongest Pokemon in the entire Kanto region, being behind Red's Charizard and Mewtwo. It just shows how strong the bond between Red and Charizard is, and how powerful they are together. I mean, look at the eyes of that Charizard. It has complete trust in this trainer. But anyways, for the sole fact that Red's Charizard was able to take down Mewtwo, and was able to perform the first Mega Evolution ever, I chose Red's Charmander for number one on this list. So yeah, those are the 10 strongest starter Pokemon of all time. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like if you did, I appreciate the time, and also if you're enjoying the channel be sure to subscribe, and if you want to follow me on Twitter for fan interactions, video updates, and other cool stuff, follow me at Ethan Dobbs. And for the question of the day, who do you think is the strongest starter Pokemon? Be sure to leave it down below in the comments, I can't wait to see you guys have in mind, and I'll see y'all next time. See ya.